Jesus Villamor is one of the great heroes of Philippine history. As a young fighter pilot, he was commander of the 6th Pursuit Squadron of the Philippine Army Air Corps when the Japanese invaded the country. Flying an obsolete Boeing P-26P shooter, he shot down a more advanced enemy aircraft. As the Japanese were sweeping across the Philippines, he escaped to Australia where he joined the Allied Intelligence Bureau and assigned to return to the Philippines to organize covert guerrilla operations against the Japanese. Thus, Jesus Villamor is the fighting pea shooter turned spy master. Born 1914 in Manila to Ilocano parents, his father, Ignacio Villamor, was an associate justice of the Philippine Supreme Court. Following the lead of his brothers, he studied at De La Salle College in Manila, and after high school, he took flying lessons at the Philippine Aerial Taxi Company, or PATCO. Years later, PATCO would morph into PAL, today's Philippine Airlines. In 1936, he joined the newly formed Philippine Army Air Corps, the PAAC, with the rank of lieutenant. He was ordered to go to the United States to continue his flight training, where he qualified for a number of aircraft types, including the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. Upon his return to the Philippines, he was promoted to captain and assigned as commander of the Air Corps Flying School based at Zablan Field in Camp Murphy, today's Camp Aguinaldo. Among Villamore's students at the flying school was the chief of staff of General Douglas MacArthur, an aging colonel named Dwight Eisenhower. Eisenhower learned to fly in a Stearman Model 75 biplane, and Villamore would grade him as a poor pilot but a good student. Years later, during Eisenhower's second term as President of the United States, Villamore would write to him saying that the poor pilot had become a great president. To prepare for the defense of the islands, the United States forces in the Far East and the armed forces of the Commonwealth of the Philippines were integrated into one command structure headed by General Douglas MacArthur called the United States Armed Forces in the Far East or USAFE. The first Philippine unit to be inducted into USAFE was the 6th Pursuit Squadron of the Philippine Army Air Corps, commanded by Captain Jesus Villamor. The 6th Pursuit was outfitted with Boeing P-26 Pea Shooter fighter planes. When it entered service in 1932, the Pea Shooter was the first all-metal monoplane fighter of the United States. It had an open cockpit design with non-retractable landing gears and held together by wire struts. To start the plane, it had to be hand-cranked until the engine catches. Hand-cranking the inertia starter of the Pea Shooter makes a unique sound. So unique that it is used as a sound effect in the Star Wars universe every time there's a busted hyper. Watch this. Watch what? By 1941, the frontline U.S. fighter plane, the Curtis P-40 Warhawk, as well as the main Japanese fighter plane, the Mitsubishi A6M-0, were both more sleek and powerful compared to the slow, stubby pea shooter. The P-26 was also at a disadvantage in terms of armament. Armed only with 30 caliber Browning M1919 machine guns, compare that with the P-40's 50 caliber Browning M2 heavy machine guns and the Zero's 20 millimeter cannon with high explosive rounds. The P-26 P shooter had become wholly outgunned and obsolete. War became a reality for the Philippines on December 8, 1941. Ten hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japanese Imperial Navy planes of the 11th Air Fleet smashed half of the U.S. Far East Air Force at Clark and Iba Field. For a detailed narrative of the attack on Clark Field, please click on the link shown above. In the next few days, the Japanese Army and Navy continued air attacks all across the island of Luzon, systematically wiping out MacArthur's Far East Air Force. 
On the morning of December 10, the Philippine Army Air Corps base at Zablan Field was alerted by the sound of ringing church bells. Led by Captain Villamore, the pilots of the 6th Pursuit Squadron scrambled to their pea shooters. They could see the Japanese planes nearing from the distance as their crews labored through the time-consuming engine start procedure, hand-cranking those inertia starters until the cold engines finally breathed to life. Without engine warm-up, they taxied their way to Zablan's short runway and took to the sky just as the enemy Zeros started their strafing run. As Villamore got airborne, a Japanese Zero immediately got on his tail to engage him. He flew to the ridgeline at the far end of the runway and dove down into the Marikina Valley below, the Zero following close behind him. Villamore was the epitome of the hotshot fighter pilot, every bit as confident and cocksure as his American counterparts. He was certain he could defeat the Japanese aircraft. At 500 feet, Villamore executed the tightest turn he ever attempted in his career, trying to get behind the enemy. The Zero continued to follow him effortlessly through his turn. Again and again, he tried to outmaneuver the enemy plane, yet the Zero was able to stick to him like glue. He realized now the capability of the Japanese plane. The Zero was faster and more maneuverable than even the top-of-the-line Curtis P-40. His own pea shooter was far outclassed in all areas. Only his own skill as a fighter pilot could save him now. Finally, he performed a desperate maneuver, diving below treetop level and flying under a row of high-tension wires. When he looked behind him, he had finally shaken off the enemy fighter. His skill had overcome the shortcomings of his outdated yet still cherished airplane. He had regained altitude when he spotted the flight of Mitsubishi Type 1 Betty bombers. He dove on the lead bomber, unleashing a burst from his 30 caliber machine guns. Smoke poured out of the Japanese aircraft as it started to lose control. Villamore just scored the first confirmed kill by a Filipino fighter pilot. After the battle, due to the damage to the airfields around Manila, the 6th Pursuit Squadron moved south to Batangas Field, a small airstrip in today's Batangas City. On December 12, the pilots of the 6th Pursuit Squadron were again alerted by the distant ringing of church bells. Five P-26 pea shooters took to the air with their commander, Captain Villamore, in the lead. They engaged as many as 50 enemy aircraft in dogfights over the skies of Batangas. Villamor was able to shoot down at least one again showing superior flying skills with his outdated pea shooter. A 6 P shooter piloted by Lieutenant Cesar Baza had already been in the air on a reconnaissance mission when the Zeros appeared. Despite being low on fuel, he still engaged the enemy and was wounded in the dogfight. Finally, he ran out of fuel and had to crash land onto Batangas Field. One of the Zeros followed him in and strafed him on the ground. Baza became the first Filipino fighter pilot killed in action. With their skill and sacrifice, the outnumbered 6th Pursuit Squadron in their puny pea shooters had successfully repelled the bombing of Batangas by a superior enemy force. In honor of Cesar Baza, an Air Force base was named after him. Fittingly, the Baza Air Base in Pampanga is today home of the Philippine Air Force 5th Fighter Wing, responsible for the defense of Philippine airspace with their fleet of KAI FA-15 Fighting Eagle multi-role combat aircraft. Jesus Villamor was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross with Oak Leaf Cluster for his actions on December 10 and 12. The medal was pinned to his chest by General Douglas MacArthur himself. Unfortunately, the air battle was already a lost cause. After days of enemy bombardment, the U.S. Far East Air Force had ceased to exist as a viable combat unit. 
MacArthur was forced to initiate War Plan Orange, the strategic retreat of all Luzon forces to the Bataan Peninsula. The Six Pursuit Squadron was ordered to destroy the remaining aircraft and move to Bataan to fight as infantry. Clutching the dynamite in his hand, William Moore could not bring himself to destroy his beloved pea shooter. He handed the explosives off to a sergeant and ordered him to do it, then walked away. In Bataan, on February 9, 1942, William Moore volunteered for a hazardous mission. Flying a Stearman Model 75, outfitted for photo reconnaissance, and escorted by the last remaining Curtis P-40s, he would fly to the southern coast of Manila Bay to pinpoint the locations of Japanese artillery batteries, which were shelling Allied forces across the bay. Under constant enemy fire, he crisscrossed the Cavite countryside, photographing the enemy positions. With the data collected by Villamor, American artillery was able to accurately target and silence the Japanese guns. With plunging fire from the massive 305mm 12-inch heavy mortars of Battery Way and Battery Giri on Corregidor Island. By this time, the Japanese controlled most of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. For months, Bataan alone fought on as the last bastion of freedom in the middle of the Empire of the Rising Sun. Tragically, the brave defenders of Bataan could not last much longer. With meager supplies running out, hunger and disease were causing more casualties than fighting the Japanese. When Bataan finally fell, Villamor was able to escape to Corregidor, then eventually made his way out to Australia. There, he was recruited to join a secret unit, the Clandestine Allied Intelligence Bureau, or AIB. The AIB was composed of agents from American, English, Australian, and Dutch intelligence units and tasked with organizing espionage and sabotage activities behind enemy lines. Since the fall of Bataan and Corregidor, MacArthur only had the bits and pieces of information that were able to filter out of the country. Though most of the reports could not be confirmed, they indicated there was widespread guerrilla activity in many parts of the Philippines. Unfortunately, the guerrilla groups were disparate and scattered with no coordination with each other. Even worse, some groups would end up fighting among themselves instead of the Japanese. To get the accurate and reliable intelligence that MacArthur needed, he had to get boots on the ground back in the Philippines. Jesus Villamor was chosen to do the job. Villamor's task was to infiltrate Negros Island in the western Visayas, make contact with the local guerrilla groups, and set up a radio transmitter to establish communications with headquarters in Australia. On December 27, 1942, Villamor's six-man all-Filipino commando team, codenamed Planet party sailed from Australia on board the submarine SS Gudgeon. On January 14, 1943, Villamor and his planet men landed on a rocky promontory called Punta Ubong in the town of Hinubaan, Negros Occidental. Punta Ubong was an ideal place for the commando landing. It is crisscrossed with an intricate system of limestone caves that provided a natural hideout for the men and their their equipment. One of the caves opens directly out to sea so small landing craft can be concealed right on the water. Inside the inner caverns, when you turn off your flashlight, you are faced with the blackest black imaginable. In some caverns, this total black comes with the sound of hundreds of bats moving in the darkness overhead. It was the perfect hideout, undetectable by Japanese patrols. William Moore picked out one of the bat-free caverns and made it his base of operations. From here, he set up his radio equipment and successfully established contact with Australia. After months, MacArthur once again had eyes and ears on the ground in the Philippines. William Moore proceeded to the next phase of his mission, meeting and coordinating with the different guerrilla groups on the island. First contact was made with the guerrilla unit 
composed of former students and faculty of Siliman University. Led by the American Roy Bell and the Filipino Salvador Absede, they operated in the jungle-covered mountains of Southern Negros. It became evident that indeed the scattered groups were uncoordinated and sometimes hostile to each other. Villamore helped unify the Negrense resistance movement into a coordinated command structure with Absede as head of the Negros military district and civilian leadership under fellow Negrense Alfredo Montilibano Sr., governor of the Free Negros government. William Moore went on to establish contact with guerrilla groups in other islands. Starting with Panay, lines of communication would eventually stretch all the way to Luzon. In the latter part of 1943, William Moore was recalled to Australia. Somehow, he had gotten on the bad side of General Richard Sutherland, MacArthur's chief of staff, and was relegated to flying an office desk for the rest of the war. Years after the war, he would move to America where, during the height of the superpower conflict known as the Cold War, he joined the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. He died on October 28, 1971 in Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. His remains were brought back to Manila and buried at the Libingan ng mga bayani. In his honor, Nichols Field was renamed the Villamore Air. Air Base and today is the headquarters of the Philippine Air Force. Here ends the story of Jesus Villamor, Lasallian, fighter pilot, spy, hero. Salamat po.